नमस्कार दोस्तों सबसे पहले तो मैं कांग्रेस की कार्य समिति के वरिष्ठ सदस्य देश के पूर्व वित्त मंत्री श्री पी चिदम्बरम जी पार्टी के महासचिव राजस्थान के प्रभारी श्री अविनाश पांडे जी अखिल भारतीय कांग्रेस कमेटी के राजस्थान प्रभारी मेरे सम्मानित सहयोगी सचिवगण और मेरे कुलीग और राष्ट्रीय मीडिया पैनलिस्ट डॉक्टर गौरव वल्लभ जो प्रोफेसर हैं फाइनेंस के एक्सेल आर जमशेदपुर में आप सबका आज इस मंच पर स्वागत विशेष तौर से राजस्थान प्रदेश कांग्रेस कमेटी राजस्थान के कांग्रेस कार्यकर्ताओं राजस्थान प्रदेश कांग्रेस कमेटी के अध्यक्ष सचिन पायलट जी पूर्व मुख्यमंत्री श्री अशोक गहलोत जी पूर्व केंद्रीय मंत्री डॉक्टर सीपी जोशी जी और हजारों हजारों कांग्रेस कार्यकर्ताओं के लिए आज एक सुखद दिन है क्योंकि दोनों लोकसभा परिणाम जो चुनाव लड़ा गया अविनाश पांडे जी और पूरी टीम के नेतृत्व में उनमें से एक का चुनाव परिणाम घोषित हो चुका है और दूसरी लोकसभा सीट पर पचानवे प्रतिशत काउंटिंग पूरी हो चुकी है और एक विधानसभा राजस्थान की सीट पर भी काउंटिंग लगभग पूरी हो गई डिक्लेयर हो गई मंडलगढ़ विधानसभा सीट कांग्रेस ने बारह वोट के मार्जिन से जीती है अजमेर में 80 प्रतिशत के करीब वोट काउंट होने के बाद कांग्रेस पार्टी 80,271 वोट की बढ़त बनाए है परिणाम लगभग निर्णय हो चुका अलवर संसदीय क्षेत्र में पचानवे प्रतिशत वोट काउंट होने के बाद कांग्रेस पार्टी एक लाख छिहत्तर हजार नौ सौ उनतालीस वोट की बढ़त बनाए है नतीजा सामने है बजट जो आज पेश किया गया और मोदी सरकार की चार साल की कारगुजारी पर राजस्थान के लोगों ने अपनी मोहर लगा दी है और शायद इसीलिए अविनाश पांडे जी और मेरे साथी सचिवगण कह रहे थे कि पहले राजस्थ आज राजस्थान और फिर पूरा हिंदुस्तान ये 2019 का आईना शायद आज के चुनावी नतीजों में अब सामने है जब से जीएसटी और नोटबंदी लागू हुई है तब से इस देश में सारे संसदीय चुनाव भारतीय जनता पार्टी हारी है और आज के चुनाव ने उस पर मोहर लगा दी इन्हीं शब्दों के साथ मैं अनुरोध करूंगा आदरणीय श्री पी चिदम्बरम जी से कि आज एक महत्वपूर्ण दिन है और श्री पी चिदम्बरम जी भारतीय राष्ट्रीय कांग्रेस की ओर से भी और इस देश के अर्थशास्त्रियों की ओर से भी इस बजट पर आ, का संज्ञान ले उस पर आ, अपना प्रकाश डालेंगे आदरणीय चिदम्बरम साहब द बजट फॉर टू थाउजेंड एटीन नाइनटीन वॉज It is the last full budget of this government, and I should add, thank God for that. Let me recall the economic context in which this budget has been presented. I draw my facts from the official document of the government, namely the economic survey that was presented on 29th January. There are two macroeconomic situation vulnerabilities: fiscal account. and current account the real effective exchange rate has appreciated about 21% since 2014 affecting india's export competitiveness but the domestic political economy meaning bjp favors a stronger less competitive exchange rate in the last 4 years the level of real agricultural gdp and real agricultural revenues have remained constant jobs is a number one issue jobs are not being created industry especially msmes create jobs industrial gva growth has declined from 9.8% to 
in 2015-16 to 6.8% in 2016-17 to 2.7% in 2017-18. In the same period, manufacturing GVA has declined from 12.7% to 7.9% to 3.1%. The last number on investment was 28.91% of GDP in the second quarter of 2017-18. The last number on CPI inflation was 5.21% in December 2017. The last numbers on credit growth are non-food credit 10% and credit to industry 2.1%. In the light of the above, the budget proposals should have been bold and radical and backed by adequate provision of funds. Unfortunately, the budget proposals are a big letdown. Let me list the big disappointments. One, fiscal deficit. The FM failed the fiscal consolidation test. All deficits have crossed the budget estimates. Against a BE fiscal deficit target for 2017-18 of 3.2, the final number will be 3.5. Even that is questionable. Similarly, for 2018-19, against a target of 3.0, FM is pegged it at 3.2. Both these slippages will have serious consequences and raise grave doubts about India's commitment to fiscal consolidation. Two, exports. I did not hear any measures to boost exports. Because the government has run out of ideas to boost exports, the FM has imposed additional customs duties to restrict imports. The Prime Minister's speech and the spirit of Davos has been forgotten within a few days. Three, agriculture. There is a promise to increase MSP 1.5 times, but there are no details. The Swaminathan Committee has been remembered in the last year of the government's tenure. Besides rupees 2,000 crore for e-markets and rupees 500 crore for Operation Green, whenever the cabinet will approve the schemes amount to a pittance. There is nothing to indicate that farmers' real income will rise. Farm sector distress will continue and deepen, putting in peril the lives of a majority of the people primarily dependent on agriculture. Four. Healthcare. The promise of rupees 5 lakh per family for secondary and tertiary healthcare is a big jumla. The target group is 10 crore families. There is as yet no scheme. Assuming that each family will avail of rupees 50,000, one tenth of 5 lakh rupees, the amount required per year will be 5 lakh crore rupees. If the insurance companies will foot the bill, the premium at rupees 5,000 to 15,000 per family will require an outgo of rupees 50,000 to 1.5 lakh crore per year. Is the FM serious? Five, jobs. The FM has no new ideas and has fallen back on the tried and failed mudra scheme. The average size of the mudra loan is rupees 43,000. This is tokenism and will not create even one job. More mudra loans will mean more tokenism, but no additional jobs. Six, investment and credit. There was nothing in the budget to boost private investment. There was nothing in the budget to encourage banks to lend and investors to borrow for new investment. The FM seems to have given up on private investment altogether. Seven, tax relief. There is no tax relief to the average taxpayer. Only corporates with income up to rupees 250 crore get a tax relief of 5%. For individuals, standard deduction is back, but long-term capital gains tax is also back. For the middle-class earner and saver, one cancels the other. Actually, by way of long-term capital gains 
and the 4% says the taxpayers will pay the government rupees 31,000 crore more, whereas the gain through standard deduction will be only rupees 8,000 crore. Eight, slashing allocations. The most disappointing part of the budget is a cut in the outlays on major schemes for 2018-19. Some important schemes that will get constant or reduced outlays are, one, Maganrega, PMAY, Pradhan Mantri Awaz Yojana, National Drinking Water Mission, Swachh Bharat Mission, National Health Mission, Midday Meal Scheme, Interest Subsidy for Short-Term Farm Credit, Northeastern Investment Promotion, Price Stabilization Fund, and Gram Jyoti Yojana. The FM will have much to explain when Parliament debates the budget next week. Any questions? Let's have one by one. I just want to uh, go back to your point on health care. Yes. One tenth of what is entitled to. The family is five persons. Yeah, but, you know, you average. That, that's not how the insurance I know, it doesn't. It's an average. Some will claim five lakhs, some will claim zero. You assume an average of 50,000 per family. Okay. You're promising me five lakh crore. Family, somebody will fall ill. Why would I not claim it? So I'm assuming an average of 50,000 rupees per family, one-tenth of what I'm entitled to, a very f a small fraction of what I'm entitled to. If you take an average of 50,000, this is what it will cost. And where is the money provided? The money is not even been provided for paying the premium. Even the premium, if it's an insurance scheme, as I suspect it is, there's no money in the budget even to pay the premium. Well, I'm sure they are, but this is a new scheme, and the government and the finance minister touted it as the world's biggest healthcare scheme. So I'm looking for where is the money provided. Obviously, the government is not going to pay out of its pocket. It's an insurance scheme. But to cover it by insurance, there must be a premium. No? Where is the premium provided for? I don't find the number. If somebody can find it, please let me know. It is a defeatist budget. I think they have thrown in the towel. They have run out of ideas. They have run out of gas. So it's just words. It's a defeatist budget. It's a budget of a government which has conceded that it has failed to address important issues in the last three years. Remember, the economic survey said, at the end of four years, we have failed to address three important areas, employment, education, and agriculture. What I want to ask is, if a government at the end of four years, speaking through the chief economic advisor, will say, sorry, we have failed to address education, employment, and agriculture, what has this government been doing for the last four years? If they wish to consolidate three insurance companies, I have no comment on that. I have no quarrel with that either. But let's go back to disinvestment. The ONGC purchase of HPCL 
is not strategic disinvestment in its true sense. It is simply an accounting gimmick. Instead of government borrowing in the market, government has asked ONGC to borrow in the market and pay the government by buying the HPCL shares. No strategic purpose is served by that disinvestment. This is the classic example of government selling its silver to meet its daily needs. I support strategic disinvestment. I don't support ONGC buying HPCL shares just to bail out the government for another 30,000 crore. I hope next year they don't do that again. They will not achieve it in 2017-18. The first half had a growth rate of 6%. The second half, I think the growth rate will not cross 6.5 or 6.75. So the average will turn out to be about 6.25 or 6.3 or 6.4 for the whole year. For the whole year, it's likely to be 6.4, maybe 6.5. From 6.5 in 2017-18, to jump to 7.75 or so in 2018-19 is, for this government, given this budget, I think is pretty much not possible. But that you should ask me next year. Ask the government next year, <laughs> not this year. Agriculture. Where is the where is the pro farmer? They say that we have already done 1.5 times the cost in MSP in some crops, and we will do it for the remaining crops. Where have they done it? If they've already done 1.5 times the cost for some crops, why does the chief economic advisor say that in agriculture, and I've quoted it, the real agricultural GDP has remained constant in the last four years. The real agricultural revenue has remained constant in the last four years, which means in the last four years, the economic status of the farmer has not improved even one bit. That's the statement in the economic survey. So for four years, if you have done so much, why has the real GDP in agriculture not improved? Why has the real farm income not improved. And I don't find anything in this budget which will suddenly improve the real GDP or the real income. And I certainly don't find anything in the budget which leads me to believe that farm income will be doubled. For four years, the real income has been constant. How will it double suddenly? And what is provided in this budget, I want to ask? What is provided? Show me anything which is, amounts to a provision. Short-term credit has been increased from 10 lakh crore to 11 lakh crore. But that goes on every year. When I started short-term credit in 2004, I remember the number was about um, 80,000 crore. It's now come to 10 lakh crore. That goes on every year. That's not new. What else is there for the farmer? You see, if the minister or ministers say, we are focusing on agriculture, we are focusing on rural areas, just because they say it 10 times, that doesn't become true. You have to tell me, where is the focus? What have they done? You'll have to show me the paragraphs in the budget speech. You'll have to show me the outlays in the annexure. You'll have to tell me, so much money has been provided for so much activity. You must identify the schemes. You must identify the money. 
Simply because 10 ministers say we are focusing on agriculture, maybe the ministers are focusing on agriculture, the budget does not. Yes. Let's look at the outlay under health and the expenditure on major items. On page 10 of the budget at a glance, and all this is done very quickly, health, the revised estimate for the current year is 53,198 crore. And the budget estimate for next year is 54,667 crore. It's an increase of about 1,500 crore in terms of expenditure under the head health. Now, if you go to the major schemes, I don't find a scheme there which reflects the insurance proposal that they've announced. There must be a scheme. There must either be an outlay where the government will pay for the hospital care, or the government will pay the premium for the insurance company to pay. But I don't find any entry here for that kind of money. <laughs> All that is accounted for, madam. Health cess has been taken into account in the revenue. Expenditure has been provided. So there's no more money than what is already provided. Both the revenue and the expenditure have been accounted for already. You're not going to add anything to the number. These numbers are final for 2017, 18, and 18, 19. No, I'll have to take one question per person. Yes, they have, we have emphasized that two microeconomic, microeconomic situations are working as a typical fiscal account and current account. That is the chief economic advisor's statement yeah. in the economic survey. And See, this year they said they will achieve 3.2. They have now admitted that the year will end with 3.5. They have slipped by 0 0.3. Even that is a bit of a jugglery because they have not counted the 30,000 crore which the ONGC is giving them. Market will take it as their borrowing rather than ONGC's borrowing nor have they accounted for the 80,000 crore they have provided for recapitalization of banks. I'm keeping all that out. This year, they failed the test. Now, next year, according to the original fiscal consolidation path, they should have achieved 3% fiscal deficit. The finance minister said, next year, we will achieve 3.3. Going back this year's track record, it inspires no confidence. Well, we have heard this. They have said it for four years. Sabka saad, sabka vikas, ache din, aane wale hai. They have said it for four years. They will say it for another 12 months. What is new about it? No, don't, don't raise your voice. Don't raise your voice. Can I, can I, can I take one question from every friend? And I'll come to you. You're absolutely right. If real income of the farmers has been constant for four years, whereas real income of certain other sections of the people are rising, inequality is indeed growing. There is growing inequality. Thomas Piketty's uh, research paper establishes that, which means the government is not focusing on how to raise the income levels of the poor people. It's a failure of this government. Yeah. 
See, I'm not an expert on agriculture. All I know is they want to double farmers' income by the year 2020, 2022. We are already in 2018. They started in 2014. So they had eight years to double the farmers' income. In four years, the economic survey admits that the farmers' real income has been constant. So where is the question of doubling it in the next four years? The economic survey, the chief economic advisor has said it has been constant in the first four years. How can it double in the next four years? I don't think the consumer will get any relief on petrol and diesel as long as this government is in office. And I'll tell you why. The excise duty on petrol and diesel per liter is the highest ever under this government. When oil prices were down, they should have given relief to the consumer. They did not. Now oil prices are rising. When oil prices are rising and the fiscal deficit is overshooting the original target, there is no way this government will cut your excise duty on petrol and diesel. If you want excise duty on petrol and diesel to be cut, you have to follow the example of Rajasthan. Well, I don't know when it began, so I can't say when it will end. Okay, last question. See, you take the mudra scheme. You take the number of people who've got mudra loans and the number of amount of money that has been given as mudra loans. You divide one by the other, you'll get 43,000. The average loan size is 43,000. If I give you 43,000 to make an additional investment, can you create a new job? Will 43,000 investment create one additional job? I have not heard anywhere 43,000 rupee investment will create a job in which event millions of jobs can be created in this country. Therefore, the mudra loan scheme is not a job creation scheme. They keep on saying every mudra loan has created at least one job. I want to find the person who has taken a loan of 43,000 who can create a job. So that's out. Jobs are created, as the CEA says, in the small and medium industrial sector. But in the small and medium industrial sector, after demonetization and after the flawed GST, many units have simply closed down. Many units have cut back production. Many units have retrenched their workers. Are jobs being created in the SME sector? No. So if jobs are not being created in the SME sector, where are the jobs being created? Which is why there is so much unrest in India especially among the youth. Look at the CSDS survey, which was published yesterday. The CSDS survey is an authentic survey, a very reliable survey. And the number one, number one worry, number one concern of all families is jobs. Just look at the survey. The survey results have been published in one of the papers, but it is available online. It is a number one worry. In your own family, you ask your relatives, you ask your children, the number one worry is jobs. Well, I've given you the numbers. The middle class gets, or the middle class is the, I take it as a tax paying, income tax paying. They get a standard deduction of about 8,000 rupees. But in terms of and if he has invested, saved money in mutual fund or et cetera, and he has to pay the cess, 
I've given you the numbers. 31,000 crore is what this class will pay the government, and in return, the government has given them 8,000 crore. Thank you very much. Let me add my congratulations to the Rajasthan PCC, the General Secretary, Sri Avinash Pandey, his secretaries, Ashok Gelatji, Sachin Pilatji, for the remarkable results in Rajasthan in both uh, parliament seats and in the assembly seat.